with its deep traditions and complacent cultures. People are interested in disturbing that harmony with economic development. It's unbelievable what was being said, not in the UN, but by some of the academic critics of the UN. Priorities for social development. I've already mentioned the UNESCO goals. Environmental sustainability. And I'm going to come back in a moment and say more about how that has changed from 1962, when in the first surge of independence, the UN came up with the sovereign rights of countries to manage their own resources. And we've got a complete book that's not yet published but about to come out on how those ideas of sovereign rights to manage one's own resources became the need for managing them in relation to development, managing them in relation to avoiding pollution, and now managing them in relation to the sustainability of the planet climate change, all those other issues. And there's another area where it's the UN that has been in the lead, not merely politically, but intellectually, in casting the issues of environment in this broader frame. Peace and human security. I was very glad, uh, Mr. Executive Director, that you mentioned human security. Because if you go to the Charter, you see what was a fairly narrow view of how the world needed to avoid war by negotiations in place of war and fighting. But over the years, that has evolved to the ideas of preventive diplomacy, the idea of disarmament and development the ideas of responsibility to protect, and then the ideas of human security, that what matters is not security of a country's borders, but security of a country's people, and not so much by the use of military force, but by a whole range of other measures to prevent insecurities of people and to ensure uh, advance of development in a more secure fashion. And the final idea, human development, has brought these ideas together into an integrated frame. And I'm very pleased that one of the Thai publications uh, by, has been on the National Human Development Report and on the idea of sufficiency. I think that was the theme of the National Human Development Report a year ago. So each of these ideas has evolved. I've mentioned human rights. Gender equality, we have a volume by Devaki Jain on women and the UN, the search for social justice. And that has shown the critical role not only of the UN in coming up with ideas, but in the four world conferences, first in Mexico, Copenhagen, Nairobi, and Beijing, in bringing together women from all over the world, giving them an opportunity to hear and learn from the experiences of others, and then often going back to their own countries, conscious of the potential progress being made by women in other countries, and mobilized to achieve progress in their own. And environmental sustainability, I've already mentioned how that idea has changed. And I'm now going to hand over to Big Louie to give a little commentary on UN's economic ideas. Thank you very much, Richard. I'm delighted to be back in Bangkok after 35 years, when most of you were not yet born. And I am even more delighted to see so many of you present and listening in awe 
for Sir Richard's presentation. I will give you specific examples of ideas that were launched by the United Nations system of organizations in the economic development field. One, around 1950, three reports were published by the United Nations, written by three committees, among, whom, among the members of whom were two future Nobel Prize winners, uh, w. Arthur Lewis, the first Nobel Prize in Economics of the Developing World, and Theodore Schultz, an agricultural economist of the University of Chicago. These, the three reports were one on national development strategies. So national development strategies, international development strategies, and the third report was on employment. These three reports written 60 years ago and presented 60 years ago presented a new structural equilibrium uh, in world trade we are in the international trade center so this was this is an important thing it created measures to encourage capital flows from the industrial world to the developing world it made proposals to lift institutional constraints in terms of national development strategies, including land reform, including um, lifting discriminating measures in bank systems, etc. It also proposed international commodity agreements in order to attack short-term fluctuations in the income of developing countries. It proposed a substantial increase in World Bank lending. And we had to wait till the arrival of McNamara in 1968 to see anything of that happening. And finally, it pro these reports proposed more flexible action on the part of the International Monetary Fund. Well, we had to wait for a very long time, and we are still waiting to a large extent. These reports fell flat no implementation. They were far ahead of their time because they proposed a global development strategy including uh, what, what was the equivalent of a global Marshall Plan. Instead we had the Marshall Plan. Now I'm from the Netherlands, a wonderful country with tall people. That's why I can't stand there because I'll, I'll knock my head. So I can't complain but as a global Dutchman I complain that this global Marshall Plan was not implemented. Second example of an idea that came out of the United Nations system, the terms of trade issue. Hans Singer, one of the first economists 